Hey everybody, Pastor Jason here with the Bartlett United Methodist Church. A pastor was invited to attend a get-together in the home of one of her parishioners, but being as she was new to her appointment and didn't really know a whole lot of people, she decided that she was going to wear her clerical collar in order to kind of identify herself. Now, the shindig was a great time, but this pastor couldn't help but notice that there was one particular little boy who kept staring at her all night long. So eventually, she decided to go over to the boy and take a seat and ask him what he was so fascinated by. The little boy sheepishly pointed toward the pastor's neck. Oh, my collar, she chuckled. I wear this because it's very important to me and very important to members of our church, but do you know why? To which the lad nodded and replied, it kills fleas and ticks for up to three months. Clerical collars. That's what we're talking about this week on Three Minute Methodism. clerical collar. So-called not because one is a secretary, but because one is clergy of some kind. It's therefore a badge of vocation. When you see somebody wearing something like this, it's pretty evident what it is that they do. Now, there are a few different styles of clerical collar, this one being the earliest, originating with the Reverend Donald McLeod, a Presbyterian minister, in 1865. It's usually called a neckband, but some have informally referred to it as a dog collar and no fleas or ticks. Over time, some traditions added a collarette to mimic the look of wearing a cassock, which had actually been en vogue for quite a while. This eventually gave way to a closed collar. With a tab, the wearer simply slips into place. Now, what style of collar one chooses to wear and when they choose to wear it is largely a matter of preference and how well one has kept up with one's laundry. <clears throat> and some clergy choose not to wear the collar at all. But for those who do, their line of work is pretty unmistakable. And it can open some doors in some pretty amazing ways to do the work of Christ. That's all we have time for this week. Look forward to seeing you next time with another episode of Three Minute Methodism. Until then, stay holy, my friends.